In this video, we're going to be reacting to a full-blown Akali documentary with the highest level of quality by GBA99. I'm going to be giving my opinions as well, being someone that's been playing Akali since her release 11 years ago. So let's just get right into this. We are going to be reacting to the history of the League's best assassin, Akali. What's up, everyone? I would like to thank PUBG Mobile for sponsoring this video. PUBG Mobile has just launched their newest game mode, Mirror World. Enveloped in powerful energy, Mirror Island descends into PUBG Mobile as the two dimensions merge. Enter the floating Mirror Island and fight as arcane heroes. Explore story clues of the events in the arcane world, collect hex shards, and help the future guardian send Mirror Island back to the real world to preserve the peace. Enter by toggling the theme mode when selecting classic mode. Eligible maps are Erangel, Livik, and Sanhok. Land on this huge island floating above Erangel, explore the island for supplies, and retreat safely before the energy is activated. When you make contact with the wind wall on the surface of Erangel, you will be sent to Piltover or Zahn on Mirror Island. After you arrive on the activated Mirror Island, you will be able to transform into either Jinx, Vi, Jace, or Caitlyn and battle against other players with new weapons and skills. If you're defeated, you'll return to Erangel in your original form. After arriving on activated Mirror Island, you can interact with Jinx, Vi, or Jace there to get clues about what happened to the world of Arcane. Defeat the Enforcers and Firelights who land on Erangel, get more Hex Shards, and the supplies they have found there to help the heroes return to their world before Arcane disappears. Enter the Mirror World Assault Sweepstakes by entering in with the link below. You could be the next lucky winner to receive a gift card or a complete mobile gaming setup. You'll also have the opportunity to play in PUBG Mobile's official live stream and matches hosted and casted by your favorite creators from PUBG and League of Legends. Remember to tune into the Mirror World Assault Livestream event. Watch it on the official PUBG Mobile channels at 6.30pm. All the dates are in the description below, and I would love to thank PUBG Mobile for sponsoring this video. <laughs> yeah, you're kidding, right? Oh, this is the Wait, initial footage really of her release. Riot did it again. Another smash hit. <laughs> League of Legends has no shortage of flashy assassins. From Katarina to Kha'Zix, there's a breadth of complex and fun characters that various one tricks have devoted themselves to mastering over the years. Some of the most famous outplays in all League history were pulled off by these champions. Has anyone not seen this play before? This is, I think this has the most views of any clip in League of Legends. My God. But amongst this class of starlets, there's one that's different from all the rest. One of these champions was the first assassin ever created by Riot. Someone who's always seemed to have unique abilities and skills unlike any other. A character who's never been boring, but also <laughs> rarely been balanced. And today, we're going to talk about the entire history of the rise, fall, and rise again of Akali, a champion worth maining. <laughs> hey, worth maining. And never balanced, but yeah, that, that's, a, that's a pretty good summary of Akali. This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. Uh -oh. As I'm sure many designed season one, they were going to design and release a true assassin champion. Riot had added a few assassin-like characters to League early on in the game's beta. High burst mm -hmm. damage melee champions like Cassadin and Katarina were already out, bringing the idea of dangerous yet squishy melee characters to the game. In addition to them, there had also been a few stealth champions added in the form of Evelyn and Shaco, who are more often than not classified as assassins as well. Old but the Evelyn. Idea of a true assassin, like what you might find in another video game, had yet to be realized. Everyone added to League so far was more so a spell cast. Leave a comment if you remember that Evelyn had a stun on cheesy levels in season of one. To succeed rather than a user's technical ability. Riot wanted to make an assassin who embodied the word. Someone who was built to dash into an enemy back line, assassinate high priority targets, and then find creative oh God, this footage is so old. This Nobody is amazing. The league roster fit that mold. That is until May 11th of 2011 when Akali was released. I would say Akali's real uniqueness was just the ability to dash nonstop. Three dashes, and then you get a reset for every assist and kill. 
Akali was one of the most ambitious projects Riot had taken on up until that point. Not only was she the first true assassin in League of Legends, but she introduced a whole heaping load of new mechanics to the game that were creative even by today's standards. Her Jeez. passive, for instance, buffed basic attacks with spell vamp and bonus magic damage on hit, but only if Akali had 10 bonus attack damage and 20 bonus ability <laughs> power. Without those bonuses, neither part of the passive would would be active, meaning players who wanted to have both from level one onward would need to use creative rune setups and starting items to achieve. And not to mention, these runes took days, days with bonus, um, bonus RP or blue essence or whatever it used to be called. Um, it took days yeah. of farming of games two, of to get those runes because they were so expensive. It was a point and click spell that when thrown dealt a little bit of damage to an enemy champion, but also marked that champion with the potential for additional damage if Akali auto attacked the character the nostalgia. thereafter. This spell in particular really required Akali to be played like a true assassin, getting up close and personal to an enemy, but perhaps <laughs> no ability better embodied her assassin playstyle than her ultimate. It's so Shadow funny. Dance was Watch. A Old people play Akali. 800 range, a distance longer than any other champion dash up until that point. With this ultimate, Akali could jump herself across a screen to an enemy target dealing magic damage on range. landing and with a very short cooldown. This ability was what really made Akali so special. Movement spells in Season 1 were rare enough as it is. Most were just a short little dash to give characters escape. Yeah, no one had dashes back in the day. Range on a dash Almost no champions. With was something we had never seen before. On top of that, the initial version of this spell also allowed Akali to use it even when rooted, <laughs> stunned, or snared, but there was a catch. Shadow Dance worked off a charge system. Akali could only hold up to three charges of the ability, where once those were used, she would have to wait some 15 to 20 seconds to build up another charge. Akali could also gain charges by getting kills or assists on enemy champions, giving her some more leeway, but this is what really kept her from being too broken. As impressive as all this might seem, Akali was still a squishy champion who didn't have much in her kit other than damage. Her final two abilities were simply an invisibility spell that could be placed in a small area to help her escape tough situations, as well as an AoE spell that dealt a bit of damage around Akali to help her burst enemies. While a skilled player- and The old shroud though, you could just buy a pink cord, 75 gold, and completely countered you. It revealed you completely. That's why she was never in pro play, it's just one 75 gold item countered her. Also, I'm curious, for people that have never played this old Akali, like you've only played the current version of Akali, are you, would you guys be interested in that, or do you kind of just not care? Because I know people, old players want to play old Akali, but I'm curious if like the new people do. Let me know in the comments. ...might be able to use her kit to burst down enemies quickly and snowball off kills into becoming a really threatening assassin. Less skilled players might find themselves wasting ultimates, using abilities too slowly, and getting burst down to nothing themselves before killing any opponents. This meant Akali's play rate was somewhat suppressed in early seasons. She was a champion who struggled, unless you put in at least a few dozen games of practice to learn all the nuances of her kit and combos. But there were yep. some players who were happy to do exactly that. Oh my. A top laner the named man. West Rice, who played competitively for Epic Gamer and Curse Esports, quickly became known in Season 1 the as the face best of Akali. in the world. The face Few of Akali. The pros at the time put in the work and effort to learn all the nuances of the champion, so she didn't see much attention in competitive play, but the few times she was picked oh was gosh. almost always when West Rice simply decided to <laughs> go off with her against some of Fun the Fun fact, that Amumu in that game is uh, oh, wow. TSM Red. Oh, brother. That is Wes Rice on his game right there. Heels, there comes Double lifts clear. playing oh, Lee Sin. It really felt like Riot hit the nail on What's the head with Akali's original design. She had plenty of strengths in her kit with insane movement and damage, but she also lacked crowd control and other important abilities that kept her from being too overpowered. As fun as she was to play, she required a lot of practice to build up the knowledge to use her most effectively. Akali really embodied that easy-to-learn, hard-to-master design philosophy Riot took up. You could even make the argument she was the starting point for the idea of maining or one-tricking champions just because of the depth in her kit, but she still did have some pretty yeah. glaring flaws. Her and Katarina were the only two champions that were worth one-tricking one, back in the day. Years, she started to see that had, like, crazy skill levels. Time. 
By season two, Akali's pick rate was hovering in the low 4% range, but even more worrying than that, her win rate was dropping hard. By summer of that year, she was getting a 45% win rate across all regions and ranks. Ah, couple that classic. Was only being played Low win rate. Three separate times in the competitive scene that year, and there was definitely cause for concern. One of the big oversights Riot had when creating Akali was a technical issue with her W ability, Twilight Shroud. This is the skill that gave Akali invisibility when standing in a small area of effect, but there is a way to completely counter this. Pink Wards, a 75 gold item in the shop that when placed granted vision of all invisible units in a large area. All an opponent had to do when facing Akali was buy one of these and the instant she pressed W, place the Pink Ward anywhere nearby. Now, one of Akali's main four abilities has just been made completely useless. Anytime you no, picked boy, Akali, boy. you were just kind of hoping that the enemy team wouldn't be good enough to use pink wards against you, which is <laughs> Very kind of true. the thing that killed her popularity in the upper levels of solo queue and professional But play. she was so, so good at low yellow. Enough compared to the other bruiser champions who could deal similar damage while also tanking much more top lane. So to remedy this, Riot gave Akali a string of buffs. These buffs were mostly new abilities added to her kit that were meant to make her huh. easier to use and a much more reliable source of damage. Her passive was changed so that it would always be active no matter what and didn't require those bonuses from rune. Fun fact, part of the reason they did this mini rework before the current rework that you're playing on right now is there was a glitch where you would throw your shroud into the wall and as long as the a portion of the middle of the shroud was in the wall, the entire shroud was invisible. I used to abuse this all the time. I would be like outside their base, throw the shroud into the wall. They can't see the shrouds there, so they'll literally just be walking out of their base, and then I just pop out of thin air and kill them. Absolutely so OP. Her items beforehand. Her shroud was tweaked to give Akali vision of wherever it was placed, as well as a few other buffs. And her E was given a new ability where it could be used to activate the secondary damage on her. Oh, this is a this is a rework before the rework I was talking this, about. Riot also nerfed a lot of the vision oh items. God, she gets reworked a lot. Popular at the time, like oracles and pink wards, which indirectly gave Akali more help along the way. And before long, she was relevant again. To, to bail. Unfortunate for Quas. Oh, oh boy, my boy. gosh, boy boy going in on man cloud. <laughs> that is a scenario of It's like that guy's never played against Akali before. He just a hundred to zeroed him without losing health. Boy boy, let's do it. Right by Season 4, Akali had seen her win rate climb well above 50% for the first time in the champion's history. She was seeing a renewed interest in competitive play as well as solo queue, since not only was she a much more reliable source of damage for a team, but she was also easier to play. This brought in new Akali players who helped to further push the champion to the upper limits of what she could do. We even got to see Akali be relevant in competitive play again, as many carry-oriented top laners like Mega Zero. Oh my oh, gosh, boy, I forgot and, uh, LMQ Spartan existed. Started swapping out their usual bruiser champions for Jesus, the assassin. I'm old. But maybe no event better represented Akali's return to relevancy than when Samsung Blue picked her in the semifinals of Worlds 2014. And locked right. them down and then right. just solo out the ring on Samsung on? Blue, Samsung Not White. Only would they pick the champion though, they would crush with her and go on to win that year's title. Down is gonna be right on top of each other. Donnie gets what he wants. He is going to be out of the fight, and he also has the intervention on. Pawn almost goes down here, but he gets the brush control. Nice. Denies the vision. Oh, no. Looper gets going, and that's going to be one for Dandy as well, and White starts things off. Shortly after season four concluded, some scrutiny started to surround that, Akali's rise that that Twitch in popularity. Streamer? Was it a good thing that an what old the? champion had now found relevancy not based on the talent of the players using her, but just because she had been made easier, kind of more casual? Akali had been made so easy, in fact, that her win rate in solo queue was topping 55% now, this on a champion who struggled to ever reach a 50% win rate before. After the season ended, Riot re-examined her kit and found that it was a bit the too range is way too and far. not exactly what they wanted to see. The assassin who used to be easy to learn, hard to master, was now just flat out easy to do well with. In response, rather than nerf Akali's damage or stats, Riot decided to make two tweaks to her kit that they hoped would bring her in line. 
They would nerf the range on her ultimate by 100 units and remove the ability for Akali to proc her second Q with uh, her E. I think this is I the worst she's the ever been in. I was probably hoping this would make Akali a less oppressive champion for the average solo queue player, but still keep her relevant for those dedicated mains. All of her stats and damage were still the exact same. She would just be a bit more difficult to do super well with. But this ended up having a cataclysmic effect on the champion. Oh, Akali yeah. saw an overnight drop in win rate from 55% to 45%, while the player base for the champion was cut down lower than it had ever been before. Akali was overpowered. Classic, classic and did need some nerfs, <laughs> But the instant she got these two changes, the champion was decimated and now completely irrelevant. Hmm. This is something we've seen before in League of Legends, particularly with older champions. If a character's kit is too simple, they'll never be played since other champions will inevitably do what they do but better meaning the only way for these older characters to be playable is if their abilities are so good and so strong they're overpowered the only fix for a solution like this is a change to the abilities themselves which that's exactly what riot started doing with akali over the next couple of years oh riot would implement a few patches that changed how akali she's changed worked how her <laughs> she's changed worked, every like single patch how fast for the past like 10 years ultimate these had little effect on Akali's pick rate or win rate in solo queue, though. So on patch 6.22, Riot went so far as to give Akali what many saw as a full-on rework, mm -hmm. changing every single ability in significant ways to try and make her playable in solo queue and viable in the competitive scene once again. But this huge update hardly moved the needle at all, as Akali was still an outdated niche champion. I mean, it makes sense. She's Riot's very first assassin, originally created seven hmm. years ago. The problem is when they did this mini rework, I remember testing it on the PBE. She just, they gutted her damage and it just wasn't good enough. They ended up buffing it, point, but that was the reason why she wasn't help. still so played. That's what she got. Riot decided that they were going to give Akali a full champion oh no. relaunch. They'd throw out nearly everything in her kit right now and start from almost scratch with a completely new design. And the designer that they brought in to lead this project was a pretty big name in the league community. None other than everyone's favorite rioter, certainly <laughs> T. My job is to make something that will kill you and cause you to fail repeatedly until you learn how to deal with it. Now, if that name doesn't mean anything to you and you haven't seen my documentary on Certainly T, let me summarize his design philosophy by saying, this is the guy who wanted to make a champion who got better or worse based on the real life cycles of the moon. <laughs> Needless to say, Certainly T is viewed as either a genius or a madman, depending on who you ask. He's I say genius. some of the most creative champions the League has ever Not seen, biased, by the but way. he's also introduced some of its biggest balancing problems. Oh, never mind. When the League community madman. heard Certainly T was the League designer on the Akali rework, everyone was immediately filled with a sense of anxiety. Would this be a top tier rework like the Warwick one he spearheaded, or would this much more likely be another insane, over-the-top character that plagued the league with balancing issues for years to come? Like most other champions he's made, all we could do was wait on bated breath to see what kind of rework Akali was going to be, and it wasn't the good kind. Listen! Not every single champion needs a million dashes, mobility, <laughs> oh my god. Akali's new kit was utter insanity. Her Q, yeah, absurd yeah, okay, damage, it was. and I was about slow to, I was about to defend this her. ability that now has a 1.5 second cooldown and also heals you if you're near max energy. Her E is now a dash backwards that shoots a projectile forward where it can then be reactivated to jump Akali to the enemy she marked yep. with no cap this is, um... reactivation range. Her new ultimate is two dashes, the first moving her in a direction that deals pretty insane damage and also stuns enemies for half a second 
Well, Akali can then reactivate the ability to dash and again, it didn't require target doing more damage that <laughs> so you could dash away based on a champion's missing health. Ironically enough, Akali's W Twilight Shroud was the only ability that kind of remained from her original kit. And it was now, still broken. When Akali goes invisible, there's literally nothing in game that can see her. And it lasted Even eight turrets, seconds, which give vision of every other invisible entity in League <laughs> will not be My able God. to attack Akali when she's stealthed underneath them which gives her insane dive potential i'm not gonna lie i think about this very often i went to riot to play tessa Kali before they released her kit or anything i remember like playing against riders in the play test team and just uh they, they interviewed me they're like you know what do you think about this uh akali this new kit on akali and i'm just like yeah it seems pretty balanced <laughs> seems pretty balanced yeah i um uh, i was wrong and chill this rework did succeed in making Akali relevant again, but it could very easily be argued that was simply because Under towers. she was now insanely overpowered. Immediately yes, after her overpowered. rework dropped, her ban rate rose from next to nothing to over 60% <laughs> overnight. The community did not want to ever face this new Akali form in solo queue, ever, even though her win rate dropped pretty far down below 50%, back near the 45% range. Nobody wanted to deal with a champion who could dive them under tower with few to That is also something so interesting to me is her win rate was 45% for a majority of the beginning of her existence. She was just she's that's just proof that she's such a hard champion to play, but anyone now that knows how to play Kali, if you had the current or the released version of a Kali, even if you're like a platinum player, you could get to challenger with this how incredibly overpowered her kid is down below 50 crazy back near the 45 mind-boggling nobody wanted to deal with a champion who could dive them under tower with few to no consequences <laughs> following the rework riot ended up going on a massive streak of nerfs to try and bring a colleague <sighs> the good line. old days by my count there have been 40 separate nerfs to try and balance her out from it's the been... time of the relaunch to today these have ranged from nerfing energy costs flat damage there's been over 60 changes of each ability to outright separate patches certain aspects of a colleague's kit like the stealth under towers on her W, the initial stun with her ultimate, or the healing with her Q. Or the targeted just ultimate. A couple of years is pretty crazy, but keep in mind that wasn't 40 consecutive nerfs in a row. Rather, ever since Akali's relaunch, she's just been in a constant state of being nerfed and then buffed and then nerfed again. Abilities My life removed, right now. <laughs> added, a never ending dance where Akali mains are desperately trying to find a moment to breathe. It's become all but a meme now amongst the oh my gosh i've seen this i've how seen this meme. Nerfs their champion has now received since this rework maybe freak outlined everything best in akali's champion spotlight when he said akali is now a restless fighter of unsurpassed skill who believes that sometimes balance needs a good shove for the most part, that's where she stands today. Akali's been a champion who always seems like she's just frustrating enough that Ooh, there are there new nerfs on the horizon. For this her Akali knows what they're doing. I see these skills. To say that her rework is a failure. Someone could look at the original Akali and say that she's no different from today's, a champion whose kit is too weird and that she's always either broken or irrelevant, never truly balanced. But I don't think that's the case. This rework, by all accounts, has been a huge success. Ever since its release, Akali has had higher pick rates than she's ever seen before, while her win rates have never gone above 50%. She's seen plenty of relevancy in the competitive scene again, being more popular than ever in pro play. That low win rate in solo queue just suggests that she's not as easy of a champion to use anymore. You have to be really technically skilled and devote a lot of time to making her work, just like with the original. Akali is currently what Riot wanted when they first released her. A high skill cap champion who requires technical play to succeed with, someone who, if you sink the time and effort into, she'll give you all sorts of incredibly flashy and exciting moments of gameplay. She's yep. a champion worth maining, and someone who finally feels like a true assassin. Two things on that. Uh, worth maining, yes, but I hope you're ready for a lot of stress if you do decide to main Akali because She'll either be the most overpowered champion or she'll be so bad it's hard to justify playing her in ranked. Um, but on that note, yeah, people love to hate on Akali uh, in the rework because they love they hate they love to hate her in general. But this rework was 
amazing. And she went from taking, honestly, she didn't really take much skill pre rework. You just threw a Q and then you dashed on them and autoed. So, but I guess it more so depended on that. You need to know when to jump in, not how to jump in. Regardless, rework was amazing. I think that's it for this. So, sh huge shout out to GBay99. He makes the best League of Legends documentaries. I'm going to link his channel in the comments or in the description. So, be sure to subscribe to him. Uh, be sure to subscribe to me if you haven't already. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.